For today's watercolor painting, I'm going to use these Rembrandt granulating colors. And I'll show you as we go along what granulating actually means. But it almost gives like a, I don't know, like a, a, a sandy look or a, like a um, leather type look. I'll show you as we go along. It's a little hard to explain. Um, at one time, these uh, this type of paint, the granulating paint, um, was my favorite. Um, and I still like it after a couple years of not watercoloring. Um, but I think at this point I'm into a, uh, more of a opaque color, um, like a creamy opaque color, which means like a solid looking color, not as transparent. Um, but I have these paints and I haven't used them in years and I wanted to go ahead and play with them. So even when I was painting a lot, I didn't use these um, colors a lot. Uh, so they're new to me um, because I haven't used them in a while. And even when I did, I, <laughs> I, yeah, I didn't use them often. And even the watercolor paper that I'm using is watercolor paper I barely ever use, but I found it in my stash. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to use that. It's called Indigo. And so I, I feel like I'm almost starting from scratch with this whole thing. Uh, but I wanted to take you all along on this little journey with me. So I'm going to put some music back music back on and um yeah just sit back and enjoy i'll be back to talk about other things as we go along The brush that I'm using right now is a silver black velvet striper brush and it's one quarter inch. Um, it gives really great um, texture, visual texture. Uh, you can make a lot of different shapes with this type of brush. And I just wanted to mention that um, I found a new watercolor artist on YouTube. Her name is Tammy K. K A Y E. And just I just watched her video and it definitely inspired this painting. So I wanted to make sure that I gave credit where credit is due. Um, her style and my style are similar. Uh, so it's just as I'm getting you know, back into watercoloring, it's great to have um, inspiration out there to to use, you know, and get me inspired and just get my brain going, you know, my, and my 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 artistic side and, you know, mojo going. And it's, it's just helpful to have um, inspiration, you know. Um, I am using an easel that let me see i have it right here the easel i bought it many years ago it is by robax.com r-o-b-a-x.com it's only about maybe an inch and a half high it is not adjustable but um, it's perfect for watercoloring and um it was uh, you know when i'm using paper that's not on a pad that has the 
page is basically glued down um, you know I like to use that blue painters tape to hold it down because I like a lot of water when I watercolor to me the more water the better so uh, my paintings can get very wet and um, so even besides like the splattering that I do sometimes I'll just use the like the dirty water that I have on my desk you know from cleaning my brushes off and sometimes I just splatter that and it the water it just makes the paints just move like to me that's the beauty of the water of watercolors um watercolor paints is because it's just move so much and it's just so beautiful um and as you can see here i'm just taking water and you know one thing you have to remember for the most part is that water color won't move if the paper isn't wet right so when i just took a little bit of water and i went on the outside of the flowers um it kind of loosens up the paint and gets it moving a little bit plus it removes any um, harder edges that I might you know not want to have there so yeah so that's what I was doing there and here I'm just looking at my my little swatch of of the colors and I'm going with a color called dusk pink and oh you know before i talk about that look at the pink that's on there you see how it looks leathery you see that it, like in the middle of the flower you can definitely tell that the paint did something that's the granulation that i was talking about before it gives that it, it's not a smooth look so if you're looking for smooth it's not granulated paint <laughs> But if you're looking for a little bit more interest, uh, that is the way to go. Now, here I am adding Dusk Pink. And I really thought for a moment, like, I'm like, oh my gosh, I am ruining this painting. But just be patient. Be patient with me <laughs> because I did, I, I think I did save that flower. So, you know, again, I'm, I'm playing with the colors. Uh, that I don't really know or how the paint this particular watercolor paint is going to react on watercolor paper I'm not familiar with so it's yeah so it's all a learning experience but and one thing another thing that you have to remember with watercolor paints and it, it gets better trust me that it doesn't this flower doesn't end up like that <laughs> but I want to show you because it's all a process right um you know that watercolors they like to move and bleed and blend and even when i'm putting this uh dusk pink in the center there you can see it kind of blending out into the petals and then i'm going to splatter that same color on there and it all just moves together it's almost it's almost like a dance it's just beautiful just beautiful um and it's going to keep moving so in that pink flower that paint until it's dry is just going to kind of keep moving around it's quite beautiful and then i'm taking that same ultramarine violet and but i switched brushes here so i'm now using let me pick it up this is um i think this is a wonder wonder forest brush it's a round and it's a size six and so the reason I switched to this brush was because I wanted to get more of a concentrated color on the end of the, the brush, on the tip of the brush. And it was easier for me to do that. And I'm taking that same ultramarine violet and I'm filling in the center of the flower. And then I'm like, well, heck, I'm going to add a little bit of a like a dark blue in there. And I did. So you can see I'm even even uh, splattering. Gosh, my mouth isn't working. Splattering with the blue. Um, and that's French ultramarine. So that purple flower has 
a darker purple and as well as a blue in the center of it. And then I splattered with the blue. And you can see that splattering. It just, it's like, it, it's like, almost like it has a life and it just moves beautifully. Um, you know, I do like to use acrylic paint, but I did a couple acrylic paintings on canvases recently. And I just, I just don't get the excitement that I do with watercolors. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, because you almost don't, I want to say you almost don't know what you're going to get with watercolors. I mean, you do, but I mean, it just moves sometimes and just creates such beauty that it just, it just works uh, so beautifully. So here I am using some greenish umber um, for the middle of the flower. That flower started out as raw sienna, uh, but I went over it with greenish umber. Another thing that I enjoy doing with my watercolor paintings is adding some sort of a background. I don't always do that, but I do like to. It's just more playing with the paint and water and watching the paint move and getting different um, designs almost onto the painting itself. To me, it just brings um, more interest to the painting and I'm going to go ahead and add some leaves and even these leaves you're going to see me really play with in a minute and um, so if you haven't noticed <laughs> my style is very loose and to me the the looser the better and the more water the better and yeah so I just like um well, I guess that's, yeah, I guess that's the best way for me to explain it is that it's loose watercolor painting. Back when I was watercolor painting a few years ago, um, I learned a lot from an artist named Angela Fair, F-E-H-R. And um, she always did a lot, like her paintings are very much about giving the feel for something. So, so you can see there's a feel of the green leaves there and now I'm splattering with green which will add more to it but you get the feel of uh, that something could be there you know sometimes it's it's another flower or whatever the case may be um, so I like to mute my images to where you get a feel for what is there And to finish up the video, I'm just going to take you in. I always date my paintings along with my signature, which is just my initials. 
And then this is the finished painting. You can see all the splattering going on, right? See all the splattering. You can see the granulation. You can even see it in the purple, see it? Yeah, definitely some paints you can notice it more. You can even see it here in this umber color, except that it's not as prevalent. Um, yep, but that is the finished painting with the paint pulled off. It's off of the, um, the board I was using to paint on. And yeah, so that is the end of this video. Thank you so much for being here. It's not my best, but again, I'm relearning and uh, yeah, I'm having fun with it. I hope you enjoyed the video. God bless. Bye-bye.